Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. Today we've got a pretty impressive knife to look at. And I have to say, I'm way late to the party on this. And honestly, I'm pretty actually surprised by this knife. I gotta, I'll gotta, i give you a little bit of background here. Uh, I reviewed the Wii version of this, the Wii Vision, both obviously designed by Snex Tan. And you can, everyone knows what this is, right? It's the Civivi version of the, the higher end Wii knife. Um, and because in the original version, the Wii version, I, I liked it, but I wasn't, you know, what I liked about it was the unique features and the interesting design more so than the practical utility of it. All right. And so because of that, I kind of felt like, okay, so there's a budget version, you know, do I need to get that excited about it? Do I need to get it my hands on it? You know, since I've already had the Wii version, maybe there's not much to, to say about this. All right. But. I'm here to eat a little bit of crow because I was seriously wrong about this knife. Uh, my assumptions were way off base. And so I've had this knife for uh, a week and a half or so now. My uh, good friend, Steve, Everyday Pocket Dumps, uh, which you should follow, who you should follow on Instagram, was willing to lend me this knife for a while. And so I've been carrying it and, and getting to, what, know it, I guess. And I cannot tell you how impressed I am with it. Well, I guess I can tell you, I'm telling you right now, I am super, super impressed with this knife. Um, you know, I'd had, I've, I'd heard a couple of people say, you know, this is actually better than the, the Weavers. And I thought, come on, is that really true? Like, how could that be? And, you know, you know, part of you always thinks when that happens, when a budget version comes out, you know, I, I feel like, there's a certain amount of temptation to claim it's better than it is because you're, you're trying to justify, you know, owning the cheaper version instead of, you know, saving up and, and laying out the cash for the expensive version. But in this case, it just might be true. And that means this knife falls into a really, really special category. So I'm going to talk about, you know, in my conclusion, I'm going to sort of hit on the, the, things that this knife does that I think are just extremely, extremely impressive. Okay. So first of all, let's point out the differences and why some of those differences matter. All right. First off, um, we have the same lock bar. Okay. Same, same backlock system that Snex designed. However, Everyone noticed two things on the Wii version. One, you could push this back and lift it out, okay? But that is not possible on this one because there's a pin in here that keeps it from going, from moving so far that you could lift it out, all right? The other thing that's here, and I mentioned this and a number of others, is just a touch of jimping. See those like three or four little little cuts there, little jimps in the, on the lock bar? And that makes a huge, huge difference. You have no idea how much that improves the comfort. You don't have to push nearly as hard on this. It just naturally kind of catches your finger and you can open or close the knife. And so that, uh, that change to me is a huge change. The, the pin stopping it from coming out, that's not that big of a deal, but the ability to uh, easily actuate this lock, that is a big deal. And so, um, that is a, that's a huge upgrade. It makes this so fidgetable, uh, even more so than the Wii version. All right. Next, you notice there's a thumb stud instead of the finger hole, right? So you can remember, you know, on the other one, you could do the spidey flick. This, if you're going to spidey flick it, you got to do the, you can do it, but you've got to do it with the, um, thumb studs. All right. Or use a typical thumb deployment, or of course do the, the lock actuation, uh, method, which I'm sure many of us, uh, do on a lot of different knives. Okay. Um, so thumb studs, again, the thumb studs make a big difference on the, on the snacks. It was the, the, the opening hole was accessible. It was fine. I, you know, I, I didn't complain about it in my review and I still wouldn't complain about it, but the thumb stud is a little more accessible and just gives you a little more leverage. So snapping that blade out there with a little bit of authority is a little bit easier and a little bit more enjoyable. All right. So, so far we've covered the changes to the lock bar, 
changes to the deployment method. There's also one other big change that is very, very notable. And as you can see on Steve's version of this knife, uh, we have a, an aftermarket clip that's been nicely anodized there. Um, but it functions the same as the clip that comes with it. So it's a bent over clip uh, that goes in and out of pocket very nicely, but it's on the side. You'll remember on the Vision, it kind of came around the back like this and it tucked into your pocket that way. And again, it was functional. I carried, around, carried it around like that quite often because I, you know, I was really determined to make a, a call on what, whether I liked it or didn't like it. And I'd heard people complain about it. And then I heard some people say, you know, quit complaining, it's fine. So I, I kind of wanted to answer that question. Um, and what I can tell you without any hesitation is this is better, okay? It's considerably better. Uh, the other one was not like a complete fail. It wasn't uncarryable or anything like that, but it was mildly inconvenient. And this is just not, it's, it's just a little more easy to, um, to deal with. And so those four changes, the last one, the, the one that I mentioned, the pin in there is not that big of a deal, but the three changes that they made to this knife make it a similar but very very different knife and they really do make it function a little better um i you know to the point that i i would kind of like to see um a wii version with the changes that they've made now i don't know if you stick with the thumb stud or you go back to the you know anyway but at least the changes to the lock with that little bit of jimping and the change to the um location of the pocket clip i think are well worthwhile i do get that that uh what would you say is not perfectly faithful to the original design and and that in that sense it loses something but it also gains quite a bit of practicality. So um, those are the, the changes that have been made. Now there are a lot of good things that it retains. All right, the blade shape here, sort of a, a modified Warren cliff with a little bit of belly to it. Nice high flat grind really makes this a, a good utilitarian blade shape that you know can do most of the EDC, EDC tasks. We're going to need it to really, really well. So I think that's a win for sure. Now it's obviously Nitro V. It's not the same steel. It's not 20 CV like the Wii. It's going to be Nitro V steel, but uh, Nitro V is a very good steel. I mean, it's you know it's not the end all and be all, and it's going to work, but it's going to work very well. You know as well as any. Uh, decent budget steel. Okay. Um, so again, blade shape retained. That's great. It keeps it faithful to the design and, and you kind of expect that they're going to be dropping down to um, a lower level of steel to hit the price point that they want for a Civivi. All right. Fidget factor. The fidget factor is absolutely retained and possibly even improved because that lock is a little easier to deal with. You can you could play with this knife all day and you're not going to get that same sort of soreness and discomfort in your finger that you used to get with the, uh, the Wii version. So again, huge, huge win right there. Um, so not only, I guess, I guess not only did they keep the fidget factor of the original, but they've improved on it to a certain degree. And then comfort in hand. And, and again, I commented on this at the time that despite the fact that the um, Vision was not a huge knife, it was still really nice in, in hand. I didn't feel like I was compromising for grip area or comfort. And I feel the same about this. It feels really good in hand. And of course, the G10 does add a little bit of extra grip over the titanium. And so arguably it could be, you know, you could, some would even prefer it. Um, I don't have a strong preference for G10 over titanium, but it's definitely very good in hand. And so at the very least it retains it and it possibly even beats the original in that department as well. Okay. I do want to give you a quick rundown of size and weight. We haven't really talked about that yet, but, um, I I'll just quickly touch on this being, you know, basically the same size as the, the Wii version. So seven and seven eighths overall three and a half inch blade four and seven sixteenths closed. So, um, the, the handle, the blade handle ratio here is really, really impressive. It's not a big package, but you do get a pretty nice bit of blade there, a, little, a good bit of cutting edge for its size. I'm tripping over my words here. All right. Uh, 4.4 ounces, 
three and a half inches of grip area. Now I have size large, or I take size large gloves. Um, if your hands were much bigger than mine, you probably start getting into a little bit of discomfort, but uh, this is this is pretty darn good for me, as we've already mentioned a minute ago. All right, so really nice. As if, if you're looking for an EDC knife, the size and weight on this, the features of this, I think are right where you want them to be. Uh, so great great knife to carry, great knife to use, uh, very good in, in virtually all the departments. I don't have any major complaints about this. All right. I do want to bring in some comparisons. Now there's some obvious comparisons. Um, you know, this is going to be cheaper than uh, a Demco 80 20.5 uh, to get that, to, to get that backlog fidget factor going. Um, you know, the, the 20.5s don't do much for me. They just don't fit my hand properly. Now, the, the full custom Demcos, uh, even the machine ground ones, are great. Like the, the full 8020 uh, or the 8020S, both of which I've reviewed, fantastic. Absolute win. One of my favorite knives in existence right now. Um, but the 20.5, I'm not a fan. Um, we could compare this to the pair of two, I think would be a decent comparison, you know, has a lot of that fidget factor has the, the locking mechanism at the back. So you can actuate it with your fingers out of the way, you know, small ish knife, easy to carry, easy to use. Um, it, you know, and I think so these, these check a lot of the same boxes. The pair of two is going to be a little bit larger overall and have that, you know, spidernomics. So if that's a big thing for you, um, and of course, you know, I would say that the pair two is a little more comfortable. And I think most people would agree with me on that. Although last time, uh, one time years ago, I said that in a video and some, someone in the comments just ranted and raved, the pair two is terrible in hand. It's the least comfortable knife I've ever seen. And, and just went on and on like this. So I was like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> um, anyway, I find the pair two pretty comfortable and I find this pretty comfortable as well. Well, um, there are some Civivis that we might want to think about comparing it to, and even some Sencat knives. Uh, let's see here. Um, here is the Sencat Serene, definitely one of the better uh, Sencat models out there. Uh, let's throw in the Spyderco Manix 2 Lockback, but you could... <coughs> I'm actually thinking more of the the plastic handled Manixes that because they have a a different locking mechanism and are similar size and lightweight and kind of fidgety. So uh, the Spyderco Manix might be a good comparison for you if you want something capable, similar size and weight. Um, the Civivi Button Lock Elementum would be a pretty good comparison as well. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, here's a small fixed blade. This is the uh, Real Steel Luna, this is the, I mean, not a fixed blade, a slip joint, I meant to say, but this is the Knife Nuts Podcast exclusive version of the Luna. Uh, and there is one comparison I wanted to save for last, and that is the Civivi Sentinel Strike. Um, both of these knives are doing some different, innovative, new stuff that we haven't seen before. Um, both of them are, they, both of them look pretty different. I will say this, the Sentinel strike, um, it's, it's, if you go, if you look at it like this, it's a really plain knife. Like this is a very standard ham handle shape for knives. Uh, the button lock is, is again, pretty common. Now having this style of backspacer, that's granted a, a new thing and it's kind of cool. And I do like that. Uh, and combining it in this form factor is pretty good as well. And now let me say, while I'm on this point that, um, a drop point version of the Sentinel Strike, I think would be pretty interesting. Uh, now it might, you, you could probably argue that it'd be too close to uh, this knife that we've already had, the uh, Serene here. But let's get back to these two. And I think these are an important comparison because one of these two is 100% the best Civivi of 2023. So I'm actually going to do a full video on that. But before I get to that, I want to, I want to share some of your comments. So between these two, 
what would you pick as the best Civivi of 2023? And if you've got another ver another option, but but man, I mean, most of the people, I, you know, I hear a lot of talk in in among other YouTubers and about on Instagram and in the knife community that you know these are sort of the top contenders for the best Civivi of 2023. I'd love to have you tell me which one you think is the best down in the comments and try to you know try to argue your case because I'm going to make a video about this and and I I will respond to those arguments uh if uh if they're made down in the comments of this video all right so i did want to bring in that comparison now this is going to be bigger a little more hand filling um k110 steel eh, you know I'd, I'd actually like to see nitro v on this or something a little bit different um nonetheless very nice knife really really well done and both of these are fantastic civivis and if you pick one or the other you can't go wrong and in a perfect world you'll be able to get both which is the 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 most ideal solution so let me get this guy out of the way and come back to the civivi vision fg all right by the way there are a number of variations of this so there's a bunch of different colors and there's a damascus with white that i actually really like the look of if i buy one i think you know this is not mine but if i do go ahead and pick myself up one that'll probably be the version that i get and and you know Normally I buy knives for review unless I really, really adore that knife. I don't keep it in the collection. So the fact that I've got to give this one back to Steve in a couple of days uh, is really making me think, man, I would like to go buy uh, my own um, Civivi Vision because it's that good. All right. So this is where I think this knife really becomes sort of a, a pretty perfect storm all right it's not real big it's not really aggressive it's because of that it's like an almost ideal everyday carry knife right you could pull this out anywhere no one is going to bat an eyelash it looks kind of tame um it's not very big so you know it's it's nearly a perfect everyday carry knife and it's perfect for almost anyone like you don't have to be into knives you don't even know have to know who snex tan is or care to love this knife, right? I think a lot of people would really, really like it, even if they're not, you know, if it, like if someone just, you know, my brother, let's say, who doesn't really do much with knives said, hey, Kev, I need a new folding knife. Do you recommend one? I would easily recommend this. It's very, very good. All right. No, so number one, great, nearly perfect EDC knife. Number two, as long as you don't need a, a, a drop point, okay? Number two, it's an upgrade over the more expensive version, which almost never happens, right? I, you know, I'm sure there are other examples out there and I probably even talked about some, but no, nothing comes to mind right now. Finally, it's also a knife nerds knife. Like it's unique and different and interesting. It's based on a custom knife. It's very different from what, you know, most of your friends and neighbors are going to have if they're carrying a folding knife. Uh, and so this checks a lot of boxes and it does it for a very convenient size and utility and even price point. So uh, I've got to say, I, this is this is really really well done and i i can't believe i didn't jump all over this the minute they came out i really should have been bending over backwards to get my hands on one i'm just happy i got one now and i'm happy i'm able to share it with you and you know sometimes when you you uh miss out on a knife and you try it later you, you know it ends up being such a great thing so it's you know now it's like Hey, this is, this is great. I now know that there's a great knife that I, I can add to my collection and enjoy and carry and use like all of you do. All right. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to check those channel sponsors. We will talk to you soon.